It's that time again, my little pirate-loving fanatics. This is another episode of Myths and Mustaches, brought to you by our sponsor, TBD. Because one day, we might have one. This is the beloved story of a boy and his pirate ship, taking on monsters, mayhem, and many marvelous mistresses. As always, before we start the show, we have our pirate fact and or question of the day. Today's question comes from a boy, Euro. Euro asks, are Vikings technically pirates? Are Vikings technically pirates? I don't know, Euro, is ice technically water? Are tigers technically large cats? Is a rectangle technically a parallelogram? Let's just look at the stark difference between the two, all right? Exhibit A, did Vikings and pirates both sail ships? Technically, yes. Exhibit B, is the main vocation of both of our existences to pillage and raid for loot? Also kind of yes. Exhibit C, are we both masters of the sword and fearsome warriors feared by all? Yeah. Ex exhibit D. Did we use our mastery of sailing to conquer important trade embargoes and waterways to disrupt economy? Oh my gosh, they are pirates. Ah, uh, hey, Pirate Rick here. Um, technically, they were around first, so wouldn't we be technically Vikings since they're kind of the, uh, the OG? Well, Rick, first off, why don't you do me a favor and shut your filthy mouth? And secondly, you want to know what Vikings didn't have? Huh? Eye patches. That's right. Didn't have those, did ya? Well, there you have it, Euro. Extremely different in many ways, with pirates coming out on top as vastly superior. Uh, Captain, Vikings actually came to America before us. Rick, I will beat you to death with your own peg leg. Chapter 4, Dead Island Doe. Spirits were high with everyone on board as the sun greeted La Botine Koskia. Captain Mustachio was barking orders at his crew while Pirate Rick ignored them and practiced balancing a mop on his hand. The refreshing warm sea air rushed into the face of Princess Rineliana as she walked across to the port side of the ship. G Good morning, Rineliana. Captain Mustachio stammered awkwardly, scratching the top of his head and unable to look Princess Rinelliana in the eyes. Good morning, Captain Mustachio, replied Princess Rinelliana, smiling slightly. Captain Mustachio stood next to her and bent over the port side. Unbeknownst to Rinelliana, Captain Mustachio had performed 47 squats before exiting his room to make sure that as he leaned, that booty would be poppin'. Did, did you sleep good? Asked Captain Mustachio, staring down at his pec muscles and flexing them awkwardly. I, I, uh, I did, thank you, replied Reneliana, as she giggled watching the flying fish jump out of the boat to keep up with the speed. So, uh, you into fish? questioned Captain Mustachio, who couldn't think of anything witty or charming to say. I mean, I suppose some of them can be interesting creatures. But she was interrupted by Captain. I wish I was a fish so you'd be into me, blurted out Captain Mustachio in a wheezing and exasperated tone. He turned his head away from Princess Reneliana, rolled his eyes and mouthed the word stupid. Wait, what? Laughed Princess Reneliana. Nothing. I have asthma sometimes. 
Oh, hey. Want to see something awesome? Asked Captain Mustachio, turning towards the princess excitedly. Sure. Why not? Reneliana squinted with an intrigued smile. Mustachio looked around on the ground for a second before exclaiming, Aha! and grabbed a flintlock pistol, emptying out a singularly round bullet from the chamber. With the precision of a chameleon tonguing a fruit fly, Mustachio chucked the bullet across the length of the vessel and smacked Pirate Rick in his left eye. <gasps> oh, my body! That hurts so bad! I can't see! I can't see! Screamed Pirate Rick. Why would anyone do this? He fell onto the ground in a collapsed heap. The mop that Rick was balancing flew high into the air and landed on his face, soaking him with dirty mop water. Rick choked and gasped. Oh, the mop water. It tastes like vomit. And there's so much blood coming out of my face. That was amazing. How did you do that? Reneliana stood wide-eyed, looking at the captain. Oh, tons of practice. I throw stuff at him all the time. Mustachio smiled at the princess and then turned to address his first mate, who was flopping around on the ground. You're doing great, buddy. Just keep pressure on the wound. The crew laughed hysterically as Rick continued to weep in the fetal position. I just... I just wanted to be loved. Rick whispered through gritted teeth. <laughs> uh, his pain entertains me, chuckled Mustachio. You're a man of many talents. I'd love to see what else you can do with that pistol of yours. Swooned Reneliana with just a hint of Stockholm Syndrome in her voice. Oh, that's, that's pretty hot shouted Rick from across the hull, eavesdropping but still groping his face. Oh, uh, y yeah, totally can. It definitely doesn't misfire and shoot too early. That's for sure, stammered Captain Mustachio, but he was interrupted by a shout from the crow's nest. Land, Captain! I see land to the northwest! yelled the pirate looking through his spyglass. Captain Mustachio snapped back to reality. He spun around and ran to the front of the boat and peered out to the northwest. Lower the main sails, men. We're heading for that island. Prepare the longboats, yelled Captain Mustachio, raising his hook hand. Oi! cheered the men as they quickly steered the boat towards the oncoming palm trees and white sand. The island came rushing into full view with the prominent speed of La Bottine Koskia. Palm trees and thick foliage decorated the mountainous landscape with a monstrous rocky peak casting a shadow on half the island. The crew threw their anchors over the side of the boat and began to load the longboats with provisions and supplies. Princess Reneliana marched straight up to Captain Mustachio holding her hands on her hips and declared, I'm going with you. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, no you're not. It's too dangerous. We have no idea what's on that island, argued Captain Mustachio. It's my map, and this is just as much my treasure hunt as it is yours. Reneliana spoke defiantly, poking him in the chest with every point made. Uh, okay, said Captain Mustachio his mustache shivering with fear at the ferocity in her eyes. The rest of the crew drew back from her as she sat herself in one of the longboats about to be lowered into the water. Captain Mustachio shook himself out of his lustful daze and jumped into the same longboat as her with a handful of the crew as the boat splashed into the water. Small reef sharks swam around the boat, searching through the coral for unsuspecting prey. The captain sat poised at the front of the longboat peering with intensity at the strange new world while his first mate, Rick, sat beside him holding a wad of toilet paper to his face and frowning angrily at the captain. The boats edged closer and closer to the golden sand. Princess Reneliana took out a small knife attached to her thigh and cut about a foot off of the bottom of her dress. As Captain Mustachio watched, he was riddled with sexy thoughts staring at his beloved short skirt shoddy. 
Reneliana was the first to jump out into the shallow waters and trudged her way onto the shore. The rest of the crew followed and dragged their boats onto the beach. They huddled around Captain Mustachio, waiting for him to direct them to their next move. All right, you herpes-ridden sea dogs, listen up. The crew laughed, except for Antonio, who hung his head sadly because he truly did have herpes. The map says that the fabled jewel, the Piedra del Mar, is located at the top of that peak. Captain Mustachio pointed to the mountainside as he spoke. The crew groaned silently. They hated heights. You shut your fat mouths. This is our treasure. And I don't care how many mountains we gotta climb. We are taking this head on. Now who's with me? Yelled Captain Mustachio. The men regained their courage at the sight of his beaming mustache. Oi! They shouted. Rineliana felt her knees become weak at the sight of Mustachio commanding his troops. She shook her head to regain her composure and walked in stride with the crew into the island wilderness. Hey guys. Thank you all so much for listening to Myths and Mustaches. My name is Logan, and I am the creator, author, editor, and voice actor for Myths and Mustaches. The intro and outro music for Myths and Mustaches was performed and recorded by the very talented Max Faith. If you loved it like I did, go check out more of his stuff at maxfaith.bandcamp.com. That's maxfaith.bandcamp.com. And if you liked what you heard from my silly stories and want to be a sponsor for my project, you can check out more of my stuff out on my Patreon at patreon.com slash myths and mustaches. And if you're already a subscriber, then I just want to tell you that I love you and uh, you're kind of my favorite. And I've sometimes thought about you romantically. And if you're not a subscriber, then well, I mean, I guess we can still be friends. Again, Thank you guys so much for listening and subscribing and stay tuned for more piratey nonsense in the upcoming weeks. Sound effects for this chapter were provided by Music for Video, Felix Bloom, and Zapsplat. All of these creators and their content can be found at www.zapsplat.com.